he talks about how um with crime which might be going back to the past chapter but when you think about crime and you think about how black people black and brown people are like the poster people for crime but then you think about the crimes that white people do and they haven't been completely severed to the title of like being troublemakers or the crime that they committed they still get to be people apart from that and it's like that is also very intentional because there's no way that this label gets tacked onto this group of people and they can never outlive it and then if this white guy does something it's like oh but he's still this person some of the most horrific murders and serial killers in history have been white people white men You don't see white men getting hit with the label of you're a freaking serial killer. Mm-mm. No, no, they get to run Fortune 500 companies. Yeah. And I thought about like tax fraud or embezzling of like millions and millions of dollars. Those are usually white men. But do we do we bat an eye? Do we call them awful names and dehumanize them? No. No, I love how Mark Zuckerberg is like solely (laughs) responsible for like the decline of society due to social media. But like, (laughs) sorry, I totally interrupted you. (laughs) I was just going to say before you made this fantastic point. (laughs) It's not that they should be dehumanized. It's the empathy. Oh, my gosh, the empathy. And the compassion and the understanding that is shown to white men should be shown to everyone. You know, treat humans like humans. Nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. And when white men make mistakes, they're forgiven. Or they actually get something. Well, actually, they don't even have to do anything. Most of the time, it's like a slap on the wrist. They get rewarded. Yeah. So if you can show empathy to one group, you can show empathy to another. Yeah, people just don't want to. Mm-hmm.